What is up my fellow Shield Brothers? It is Shield Brother 6 of the History Armada, and we are here today on this May 12th to discuss a unique figure of Scottish history and his effects and his saga per se. Today we are talking about Rob Roy McGregor and the Children of the Mist. So to discuss Rob Roy McGregor and his life, we must first look at his ancestry and their efforts. The McGregors were legendary outlaws known as the Children of the Mist, who suffered the extremes of state oppression under the British. Following the Battle of Glenfruin in 1603, the McGregors massacred over 140 members of the clan Colcahoon and parties of schoolboys who had simply come to the field to watch the battle. King James VII subsequently outlawed the entirety of the McGregor clan for this. Under the prescriptive acts of Clan Gregor, the name McGregor was abolished and bearing the McGregor name became punishable by death. McGregor men were executed. The women were stripped bare, branded, and whipped through the streets. McGregor women and children were sold into slavery for Britain's new colonies in North America. As outlaws or people outside the protection of the law, MacGregors were denied food, water, and shelter, as well as the sacraments of baptism, holy communion, marriage, and last rites. They were hunted with hounds, and MacGregor heads could be sold to the British government to attain pardon for, the, for people's own crimes of thievery and murder. Enormous rewards were offered for the killing or capture of the clan's most important members. Such as, in the spring of 1604, the chief and laird of McGregor was hung with 30 of his warrior clansmen against the western end of St. Giles Kirk in Edinburgh, where the heart of Midlothian emblem is now built into the cobbles. You can see the kirk here on the screen. They were hung on the western end of it. The surviving McGregors continued in two groups. The first were those who legally changed their name to satisfy the law, but never changed their heart or blood. The other group were those who took to the vast highlands and continued to use their Gregor names in defiance. Rob Roy McGregor was born to such this group. On the banks of Loch Katrine, the third son of Donald Glass of Glengyle and Margaret Campbell, on the 7th of March 1671 of the McGregor clans. Because of the proscription, he was forced to assume his mother's maiden name of Campbell. As the son of a senior member of the clan, he was well educated in reading and writing and was schooled in the art of fighting and swordsmanship. Rob gained land on the east side of Loch Lomond near Inversnide and augmented his meager living there by rustling and driving cattle. Also, he managed to, uh, so per se, persuade cattle owners to pay black rent or black meal, the origin of the word blackmail, to have their cattle protected by Rob and his fellow McGregors. Since the McGregors were often the guilty cattle rustlers themselves, being paid to protect the cattle proved to be an extremely lucrative endeavor. The McGregor clan was sympathetic to the Jacobite cause, supporting the, de the deposed King James VIII rather than William of Orange and Queen Mary. When Bonnie Dundee raised a Jacobite army in support of James, the McGregors joined him. Rob Roy and his father fought at the subsequent Battle of Kilcranky in 1689, but the rebellion fizzled out soon after. Rob's father was captured on a cattle raid and imprisoned the following winter. The McGregors returned to quote-unquote protecting cattle to earn money. This eventually resulted in Rob restoring one particular head of stolen cattle to the rightful owner, the Campbell Earl of Brettlebane. Rob's status increased accordingly and was soon employed to quote-unquote protect the cattle belonging to a number of other estates. The Jacobite cause had faded somewhat and an armistice was agreed in 1691, and the condition that the clan chiefs agreed to sign the Oath of Allegiance to William of Orange. The late signing of this oath subsequently led to the Massacre of Glencoe the following year. 
Glencoe is an event in Scottish history that I must admit does boil my blood, but that is a video and a discussion for another time. Still in prison, Donald Glass McGregor initially refused to sign, but relented after the death of his wife. After signing the Oath of Allegiance, however, the Privy Council demanded that he pay the cost of his own imprisonment. Rob undertook a raid to steal some cattle to pay for this levy. He targeted land around the village of Kippen, but a fracas ensued and a local man was killed in the fight during a visit to Glasgow, Glasgow in December 1695. Rob was arrested and was sentenced to, the, to be sent to Flanders, but he escaped and returned home. Rob made money by buying cattle in Scotland, then droving them south to England and selling them for a profit. Despite exceptionally hard times, he managed to make a success of his droving and protection business and marry his wife gave birth to at least five sons who survived to manhood. During this time, he earned a fearsome reputation as a swordsman by winning a number of duels, crediting his success to his skill and the length of his arms. In 1712, he borrowed £1,000 from the Duke of Montrose, pictured here in the center of the screen, to finance a deal, but it is believed his chief drover promptly disappeared with his money. Montrose believed that Rob was complicit in the loss of his money, and even though Rob offered to pay back what he could immediately, he was taken to court and declared a bankrupt and a thief. To avoid imprisonment, Rob Roy McGregor headed north once again. Montrose demanded the seizure of Rob's property, and it is said that Rob's, Ro Rob's, Rob's wife was raped and branded by the soldiers who carried out the eviction. And this is pictured in the Rob Roy movie. The Rob Roy m movie isn't too accurate, but it also isn't too inaccurate for such a action drama movie. Rob Roy hid out in the Highlands, evading capture. Eventually, the Campbell Earl of Bredelbane, an enemy of Montrose, granted him land in Glen Dockart. Rob returned to taking protection money and raiding, and raiding once again to making a living. Not surprisingly, the lands of the Duke of Montrose suffered repeated attacks and Rob earned a reputation for assisting poor clansmen who also had financial problems with Montrose. But in 1715, the Jacobites rose again, and once more Rob Roy joined the cause. But he and his men arrived too late for the main battle of the campaign at Sheriff Miller. The Jacobites had won a slender victory, but hesitation on the part of the Jacobite leaders and the late arrival of King James from France led to the withering of the uprising once again. Rob Roy was accused of treason for his part in the uprising, but eventually an amnesty was offered to all who surrendered. Rob eventually handed in some old and useless weapons to the Duke of Argyle, who gave him a house in Glenshira. Rob continued to raid the lands of the Duke of Montrose, despite the Duke's repeated attempts to capture him. Finally, Montrose obtained the letters of fire and sword against Rob Roy McGregor, and he was eventually captured at Balkider. Again, Rob escaped, this time on the journey back to Stirling. He was captured again when a promise of safe conduct from the Duke of Arthol was broken, but he escaped his prison cell in Dunkeld by bribing the guards. By 1720, Montrose and Arthol had given up trying to capture him, and Rob Roy McGregor moved back near Balkider to resume his previous life. His reputation was enhanced when Daniel Defoe, the author of Robinson Crusoe, wrote an account of his adventures entitled Highland Rogue, and Sir Walter Scott also wrote a novel called Rob Roy. Rob was a had a comfortable and peaceful end at an old age. He converted to Catholicism at the end of his life and died on December 28th, 1734, after a short illness. Rob Roy McGregor is now buried at Belkeder, which is pictured left here, and he was buried on New Year's Day, 1735. His wife and two sons, and two of his sons, were later buried in the same grave besides him and there is a gravestone which has a carving of a sword on its surface. And that is the end of the unique, valiant, well, some would consider him a valiant rogue of the Highlands, Rob Roy McGregor. 
I just thought it was a unique character that ha does have a lot of novels and movies made after him, and it is a unique event in Scottish history that has, he has his hands in a lot of different events. The cattle rustling of the Highlands, the Jacobite uprisings, political intrigue, it's just Rob Roy McGregor is kind of the exemplary idea that comes to mind when you think of the Highland Rogue of the later Scottish history. And being of the Children of the Mist, the McGregor clan, it is only, you know, it is only fitting that he is a legendary outlaw because of it. But I hope you have enjoyed this little bit of Scots history about the Jacobite uprisings and Rob Roy McGregor. I must accredit a lot of this script today from Andrew Hillhouse, who I will link in the comments below. Also, I apologize for any butchering of any Scots Gaelic names or places. I made an effort, but I know some of them probably came out poorly. But nevertheless, never the ne nevertheless, this has been Shield Brother Six of the History Armada. And as always, I'll catch y'all next time. Thank you for viewing. Abagubra.